that time than right now. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We are thankful for another wonderful opportunity to be here, to be able to uh, sit with one another and discuss the beauty of what it is that Jesus Christ has provided for us. And he truly has, y'all, provided for us a wonderful thing through his death, through his burial and his resurrection. He has truly made available for us so much. And so we come um, and attempt to allow our hearts to see what it is that he has done mm-hmm. so that we can see that effect in our lives, the change that he's provided for us, the renewing, the guidance that he's provided for us. And so we're just forever thankful. And I, think, yes. I always thank God for uh, you guys uh, uh, coming and fellowshipping and speaking what thus saith the Lord as he leads you. And I also thank those that watch uh, us online as well. We bless God for you guys and uh, we pray that you're being edified as well. Amen. And so what we did is we closed out a series of, uh, a couple weeks ago on the circumcision of the heart where we talked about the effect of what God does in relation to our hearts in cutting away the focus of self that we have, that we're born with, that we again, that we grow up in, this consuming focus upon ourselves and how he cuts that away so that we our hearts can look to Jesus and trust in him and so I wanted to then move on to a series where we talk about faith because what we talked about that circumcision of the heart uh, that takes place with us is done through faith through faith in Jesus Christ through us trusting in whatever it is whatever little we know of him as we trust in that, God says, um, I will continue to cut away that focus of self and strengthen your faith in me at the same time. And so what I want to do was I want to get into a series where we talk about faith, where we talk about faith. And so today we're just going to do an introduction to this series on faith. We're just going to introduce this series. And so when we talk about, again, faith, faith is an extremely important thing when it comes to the Bible. It's all over the place and it shows great importance of faith, faith. Mm -hmm. And look at what a couple of things that Jesus said in relation to faith. Look at what he says in Matthew chapter nine, verse 29. He says, then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. And I want to just notice that he said, according to their faith, again, and in this context, just for time's sake, I didn't present all the context, but this was the healing of a blind individual. Mm -hmm. And he said, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. Look at what he says in Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. He says, then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. He says, let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Again, Jesus tells this woman, according to her faith, according to her faith, let it be done unto you. And what was she looking for? She was looking for the healing of her daughter. And he said, according to your faith, again, showing the importance of faith. Look what it says in Mark chapter five, verse 34. It says, and he said, speaking of Jesus again, and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Again, Jesus constantly talking to these individuals, telling them, that according to their faith, what it is that he provided in the healing of them was made available through their faith, through their faith, showing the importance of faith. Look what it says over here in Luke chapter 18, verse eight. It says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man comes, speaking of Jesus, Jesus speaking, will he really find faith on the earth? 
Mm. Look at what Jesus is saying again. When he returns, at his return, after his death, after his burial, after his resurrection, after his ascension, where he stands, sits right now at the right hand of God, and when he returns, look at what he says. He's going to be wondering where he really finds. Mm -hmm. Faith. Mm -hmm. Faith. And then look at what it says in Luke chapter 22. Verse 32, he says, but I have prayed for you. This is Jesus speaking again. And he's speaking to Peter again. This is just, uh, I'm just pulling these out just for time's sake. Uh, um, he says, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother, brethren. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus again speaking to uh, Peter at the time of, uh, I think, yeah, this is Peter. At the time of his, again, renouncing of, of Jesus because of his fear of, of the people coming and doing to him what they did to Jesus mm -hmm. and whipping him. Out of his fear, the people said, Isn't, aren't you the one that was hanging with that Jesus person? He said, no, no, no. Well, what did Jesus say to him? My prayer for you mm -hmm. is that your faith mm -hmm. should not fail. Yeah. He says, and when you have returned, meaning again, I'm sure that you will return. He says, go and strengthen your brother. Yes. Go and strengthen your brother in the same faith that you have. Again, so what all of these things show from Jesus' standpoint is that he views faith as important. Mm -hmm. As very, very, very mm -hmm. important. And again, this is why we're again going to look at this series. So a couple things when we talk about Faith. When we talk about faith, there are a couple of things that are um, the outcome of faith. And look at what it says over here in Romans chapter 3, verse 21 through 23. Because the thing, again, that I want us to understand and know is that we are justified by faith. By faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. We are justified. Look at what it says here in Romans chapter 3, verse 21. It says, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets he says even the righteousness of god look what he says through faith in jesus christ mm -hmm. and he says it is to all and it is placed on all who believe mm -hmm. on all who believe mm -hmm. he says for there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. He shows here in this scriptures that it is through faith in Jesus Christ that a person yes, is right. declared right with God. It's through faith in Jesus that God's righteousness is imputed and placed on a person. Mm -hmm. He says, and again, he says in verse 21, but now the righteousness of God is revealed apart from the law. Meaning yes. apart from a doing this, getting this together, fix this, stop this. Apart from that, he says, the righteousness of, of God is revealed. And it is through faith, this righteousness in Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. Again, a person is justified or declared right with God by faith in Jesus. Look what it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. It says, therefore being justified by faith. He says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, showing that us having right standing with God, being declared right with God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Again, this is extremely important. And so a couple things that as we go along in this series, uh, we're going to answer a couple of questions. One of those questions is, what causes a person to come to faith in Jesus Christ? That's important mm -hmm. to understand what causes a person to come to faith in Jesus Christ. What hinders a person from coming to faith in Jesus Christ? That is a very, very important question to understand and to know what hinders so that we can know concerning our family, our friends. What is that hindering block that's, that's, that's preventing them from coming to faith in Jesus Christ? And also, why did God choose faith in Jesus as the path for mankind to follow in order for them to be right with God? These are the questions that we're going to answer as we go along in this series. We're not going to answer them all today, 
But these are questions that we are going to ask and many more. There are going to be many more questions that come up as we go along. But again, why, one of the questions is why did God choose faith? Why did he say faith in Jesus is what makes you right with me? And not your good works, not you trying to fix this, not you trying to stop that. Why? Why did he do that? This is, again, as we go along in this series, this and many other questions are going to be what arise and are attempted to be answered through this series on faith. So another aspect when it comes to faith is that we are to live. By faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We are to live by faith. And look what it says in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. It says, Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Who are the just? Those that have been declared right with God. Who have been justified. Well, look at what he says they do. They live by faith. So it's not just a one time, I believe Jesus, now let me move on to something else. Mm -hmm. No, they are to live yes. by faith in yes. Jesus Christ. And look at what, again, it says over here in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. He says, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. He says, for in it or in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Look what he says. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Right. This is a quote from this. This Habakkuk is an Old Testament uh, um, scripture where he quoted this scripture right here and connected it to the gospel. He said this, he said, the, uh, I am not ashamed of the gospel or the good news of what Jesus Christ has done through his death, burial, and resurrection. And he says it is because salvation, the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes comes through trust in that gospel, mm -hmm. comes through that gospel, mm -hmm. comes through that gospel of Christ. He says and then he ends it with saying, the just shall live by faith. By faith in what? Yes, by faith in what this good news tells us of Christ. What this good news is of what Jesus Christ has done. Mankind is to live by faith mm -hmm. in that. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I have heard faith described as the currency of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. um, just like you, you ain't going to get nowhere with money in this natural <laughs> realm. You're not going to get anywhere with faith and with Jesus because that's the start of your journey with him. You know, believing that he died and that he rose on the third day. Mm -hmm. All that comes about by faith because mm -hmm. we didn't see it. My, my. So yeah. we're just believing it. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're having faith and that really happened. My, my, so my. that's the beginning. That, that's your first deposit mm -hmm. into your faith account. And, and and that's the thing. And then there's a continual. A continuation. Continual. And, then, and again, because I almost uh, I like to even say it as a, a conduit through which that which is of God comes through. It's the conduit of faith. That's why it says, and we're going to look at the scripture later on in Ephesians chapter 2, where it says you are saved by grace through faith, mm -hmm. through that conduit of faith. And again, and we are to live by those that have come to faith in Jesus Christ, trusted in what he did at his, through his death, burial, and resurrection. They're justified at that moment, right then and there. But they are to then continue mm -hmm. To live by faith in Jesus Christ. And, and so a couple questions that we're going to look at as we go along in this series is what is the outcome of a person living by faith in Jesus? What, what's the outcome? What's the result of that? Another question is what is Satan's alternative to living by faith that is giving to, to, to believers and unbelievers alike? What is this alternative that Satan, who is the, the, uh, 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 the enemy of our souls, the Bible says, what, is, what are the alternatives to faith in Christ that the enemy attempts to present to us? Uh, another question is, can a believer be redirected away from living by faith in Jesus? Mm -hmm. These are questions that we're going to ask. And then another is, what is the outcome of being redirected away? From living by 
by faith in Jesus Christ. All of these things, as we go along in this series, we're going to uh, seek to answer, find answers to. What, what, again, what is Satan's alternative? What's the outcome of if a person is redirected away from faith in Christ? How does that affect their lives? What is the outcome of if they do truly live by faith in Jesus Christ? What's the result of that? What's the outcome? Another thing that we, we're going to look at as we go along is the work of faith. The work of faith. Look at what James says over here in James chapter 2, verse 17, 18, and verse 22 as well. It says, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. He says, but, if, but some will say, someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. And then look at verse 22 where it says, do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect or complete? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to look at the works of faith in which James was speaking of here. In this context, he was saying that there is a corresponding action that is reflective of your faith. That will take place in your life. Even, and, and Paul said it this way in Romans chapter 4 verse 12. It's speaking of, again, this is in the middle of, of, of a, a, a statement. But look what he says. He says, and the father, speaking of Abraham, and the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, speaking of the Jews, but who also walk in the steps of faith. Mm -hmm. Meaning that's a walk. That's a, a continual walk which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. Meaning that was a, a, a steps of faith. That was an outcome of his belief. And he's saying the same thing regarding us who trust in Jesus Christ. There's going to be some steps of faith that we're going to walk that are going to be an outcome of our faith in Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at that. Let me show you a couple of examples that he gave in the, in the Bible. Look what it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse, uh, excuse me, verse, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4 and 7. Look what it says. By faith, Abram offered. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. By faith, he did something. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. By faith, Abel, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Oh, my. God testifying of his gifts, and through it, through it, he being dead, still speaks. And all I want us just to notice for right now, because we're going to get into it later, but notice this, by faith, he did something. Mm -hmm. there, was some, there was a corresponding action that reflected and showed what his faith was. And in verse 7, it said the same thing. Uh, by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet see, seen, look what it says, he moved mm -hmm. with godly fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He moved, meaning there was a corresponding action that was a reflection of what he believed. Mm -hmm. That's what, again, when we talk about faith and the works, that's what that is. It says, again, by faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, he moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, my goodness, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. All of that was a work of faith. It was a reflection or an outcome of his faith in God. God told him something, he believed, and he moved on the basis of what he believed. Mm -hmm. God said, this world about to be destroyed. The only way is through this building of this ark. He believed that, and what happened? He moved with godly fear in order to do that. That's a work of faith. And we're going to get into that even more as we, we go along. But look at these other examples. It says in verse 8 of Hebrews chapter 11, it says, By faith, Abraham obeyed 
when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive and inherit. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Again, notice again the work of faith that he did. It was, it was him moving. God promised him, I have an inheritance for you over in this land. He believed and what proved that, what, that he believed was the fact that he moved towards that land Amen. where the inheritance was. Mm -hmm. That was the work of faith. That he spoke of in, in James. And again, knowing, he says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, dwelt, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise of God. Again, and Sarah as well, look what it says. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength, oh my, to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful whom had promised. Look what he says. She received strength from God to be able to bear the child that God had promised her. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with us. God is promising us mm -hmm. that he's going to do something in and through us and we receive strength for that to come to pass Amen. by faith. Amen. Oh my. Go ahead, sir. You got something? If I may say that um, and, uh, Abraham and his offspring says they became heirs that would mean they had faith in God. Mm. But in order for them to get the promise of mm. Abraham, they had to apply that same oh, faith. Oh my, come on now. Oh my, and that is so, so true. Because again, and it, and I didn't put the scriptures on here, but the whole book, uh, the whole chapter of 11 of Hebrews is, is all just like this, by faith, this happened, by faith, this happened. And what it ultimately did is, it said the same thing for Isaac, because they yes. followed in the same pathway as Abraham. Yes. They said the same thing yes. for Jacob as well. Again, because they followed in that same path of faith. Go ahead. Exactly. Because even though we are heirs. Oh, of the come on now. Also, come on. got to apply that Jesus oh, Christ faith. Oh, come on. It to be effective. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Because again, just like she said earlier again about that currency. Or again, or, or even what I said is well, that that faith is the conduit yes. through which that which God has provided and made available for us comes through. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are called to live by faith. Yes, yes. Live yes. by faith. Because again, as we do that, there are going to be these corresponding actions that I'm trying not to skip ahead. Y'all got me <laughs> skipping ahead. But again, there are going to be corresponding actions that again set us up for. That which God has provided. Because yes, yes, yes. even, see, y'all got me skipping. But even the example I didn't use, he, he uses an example of Rahab. Rahab is where it talks about in Hebrews chapter 11. I didn't use that one. That's going to be one of my ones that I used. But Rahab was a prostitute. And she was in the, the, uh, 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 the land of, I forgot what land that was, that God was going to destroy. And God sent some spies there and told, and, and, and she they went into the house, or she saw them. She let them into the house. And what they told her is that, hey, he's about to destroy this land. Mm -hmm. And you and, and everybody else, y'all need to get out. And so while they were still in there, there were some people that came from the city coming saying, I want those individuals. I heard some spies are in there. And she ended up, she lied, but she mm -hmm. ended up protecting them mm -hmm. and kept them. Uh, and, and it talked about how that was a reflection of the fact that she believed what was said to her. Mm -hmm. That you, you're, that they're about to destroy this place, that God is about to destroy this place, and you have access out with us. And because she believed that, she responded the way she, that she did in protecting them, going and getting her family, and taking them to the house. The spies came back, and they were able to escape. And what, what's my point with that? That she set herself up for what God had provided because she believed him. That's right. She, if she, if she never believed him, right. then she would have probably said, yeah, these spies in here, come and get them. And she wouldn't have set herself up for the escape. 
from the destruction that was ahead. Mm -hmm. It was the same thing again with us. And, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to skip because we're going to get into all of that and look at all that. I don't have the scriptures up here. But again, my point with that is that through faith and through these works of faith, you set yourself up to receive and walk in what it is that God has provided. That's right. Now, again, that's why it's about faith. You're justified. Then you are to live by faith. As you live by faith, there's going to be works of faith. And those works of faith are going to then set you up for that which God is providing yes, to work in your life. Yes. My, my. We're going to get into all of that, y'all. All of that. But again, just like with Sarah, it says that through faith she received strength to bear and bring forth that which God had promised. Right. Because she believed. Because she believed. And so a couple things that we're going to look at as we go throughout this series is work, what are the works of faith that believers in Jesus Christ ought to walk in? We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how does the work of faith contrast works that are done by people who are trying to be right with God through their works. See, there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a, a, a faith there's a work that is a byproduct of faith. And then there's a, 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 a work that a person does that to try to get right with God. That's two different things. And they contrast one another. But a lot of times, anytime a person hears work, they automatically think it's something I got to do in order to be right with God. No. And he's saying, when we talk about a work of faith, I continue to say that it is a response, a response of the heart. And just to use another example, if I, if, if, if a person is down and they ain't got no money, they're down to a dollar and, and they say, hey, Jason, can I get a hundred dollars from you? I say, okay, cool. Meet me at the quick trip real quick. I'll bring it to you right up there. Them going from wherever their location is to the quick trip is a work. Did it deserve any? Did they deserve anything from me by doing that? No. What did it do? It set them up for the provision that I, I had provided for them. It positioned them to receive. It didn't do anything. Now, if they came up there and said, okay, well, let me wash your windshields. Let me wash your tires. What would that be? That would be them trying to earn from me. Come on now. Mm -hmm. You see the difference between those two? One is because that person believed that I was going to provide what I said I was going to provide in the location I said I was going to provide it. That work was, again, simply a response of their faith. But if they come up there with the mindset saying, I got to do all this for Jason in order to get this hundred dollars, then again, what they are doing is trying to earn. And that's a big difference. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Did you have something? I thought yes. Um yeah, what I want to do is uh, meet you at Quick Trip for $100. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, uh, 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 for uh, the faith, and we got to realize unto every man God had given him. Oh, my, faith. my, we're going to talk about that. Okay, we're going to talk about that. I don't oh, get that my, no, 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 that's good. You go ahead and mention so it because we, we're going to talk about that later yeah, on, but go ahead. It's important that, that faith is a. Is, it's important that the application be of, in faith yeah. as God has ordained it oh, in him. Oh, come what on. Happened? Because every man got faith. My, my. Not, oh, my. We're going to so, talk but, about um, that, too. Amen. Oh. I don't want to get into it. Oh, this is good, though. But we go, we go. And, and see, these are even more questions. How <laughs> you pray? But these are even more questions uh, that, again, as we go along, are going to be added. Because there are going to be so many more that I, act, I wonder and answer as we go along concerning faith. What is that measure of faith? We're going to talk about all of that. What's the purpose of it? All that stuff. We're going to look at it. And so another question is, what is the purpose and outcome of, of the work of faith that a believer is to walk in? That's one of the other questions we're going to talk about. And then, what does it mean for the believer if works of faith aren't apparent in their lives? If works of faith aren't apparent, we're going to talk about all of that. And so then, what I said as well, is that God is working through our faith. Yes. God working through our faith is yes. where, again, another reason why faith is extremely important. Look at what he says here in Ephesians chapter 1, 
verse 19. It says, and what is the, this is again in the middle of a thought, y'all, but just for time's sake, I just did this. It says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Look what he said. Toward us who believe. This exceeding greatness of his power, that's God's power, is toward those. This great power of God, just like Sarah receives strength to give birth. There's an exceeding great power from God to those who believe, who live by faith in Jesus Christ. He says, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in. In Christ, this is the same power he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. That same power that God used to raise up Jesus from the dead is the same power he's going to work in us who believe, That's right. who live by faith, That's right. who live by faith in Jesus. And then look what it says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 12. Again, my love of thought is as buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him. Speaking of Jesus, he says, through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. This is saying almost the exact same thing Ephesians is saying. He's saying that same power that he raised up Jesus from the dead by the working of his mighty power. He's going to do the same thing in us to raise us up to newness of life right. as we live by faith mm -hmm. through faith that's right. through faith and that's my point with this is to show that god does what he does in and through us through faith mm -hmm. through faith in jesus christ that is what he does his great work in us through it is as we live by faith in jesus christ and look what it says over here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 10, 8 through 10, it says, For by grace you have been saved. Look again, through faith. That's through right. faith. Right. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. He says, Not of works, lest anyone should boast. He says, For we are his workmanship, mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And again, even in, if we look at this context, he says, for it, it is by grace that you are saved. And that grace comes through faith that saves you. That's it comes right. through grace. That's and he right. says, and it's not of yourselves, meaning it's not of anything that you think you can do where you can now boast. He says, lest anyone should boast. In verse 10, he says, for we are, he says, this is what the case is. For we are his Workmanship. That word workmanship is the Greek word poema. It's where we get the word poem from. Mm -hmm. And it's we are his poem. He says created in Christ Jesus. We are the one that God is renewing and changing and doing his great work in us. Again, by that grace that comes through faith. Mm -hmm. By that grace that comes through faith. We are created in Christ Jesus as his workmanship. Look what he says. For good works for the purpose of being used by God for uh, for good works to benefit people to bless people to turn people to him to cause people to trust and look to him and, and see Jesus he does his work in us for the purpose of renewing and changing us that we may be used to bless others but how well, how does he do it he does it through faith mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. faith Mm -hmm. Through faith in him. He says God has prepared beforehand good works that we should walk in. Meaning God already has it set up to where the renewing and the changing that I do in and through you. As you live by faith in me, there are going to be some outcomes, some good works, some change, some renewing in your life. That is going to be a byproduct of that, of my working on the inside of you. And me working on the inside of you is a byproduct of you living by faith in me. Go mm -hmm. ahead, sir. Um, what's that word of the scripture you said was parama? Workmanship, the word that, workmanship. Okay, uh, so what comes to mind is Adam, who was naked, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or what have you. And he applied his faith to 
Adam applied his faith to God mm -hmm. as long as he was naked. Mm. Then when he stopped being naked and mm. started to clothe himself, my, my. there was no faith there. My God goodness. No more. My goodness. Yeah. After, oh, you are so right. After he partook, that is so true. After he partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and it said that he saw himself. Yeah. He was focused on himself right. at right. that right. point. It was no longer faith in what God yes. had provided. What was yes. his focus now? <laughs> Me. Yes. Oh, yes. my. That's yes. good, sir. Yes. yes. And that is absolutely right. And therefore, what God was doing and leading and guiding uh, um, uh, Adam prior to wasn't happening anymore because Adam now was consumed with yes. himself. And it's the same yes. thing with us, y'all, yes. that we are as we through faith, live by faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. God can do that renewing and changing yes. when he leads us to the good works that he's provided for us, that he's prepared yes. beforehand. But if we get back to looking at us again, we again will be shifted away from seeing what it is that he's provided for us beforehand. But all of that is God working through our faith. Yes. Through faith and again, our faith in what? Our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith in Christ. When he talks about that faith, it is talking about faith in what Jesus Christ has done, has provided, mm -hmm. has made available for mm -hmm. us through his death, burial, and resurrection. As we live by faith in that, there's going to be this outcome of works of faith. As those works of faith come, God then can work through us to manifest right. that which he, right. he is, has called us to and that which he wants to manifest in our lives. And so, again, this isn't going to be long because just for the sake of this is just an introduction. But again, the, the four things, again, that we're going to initially look at when it comes to this faith is the fact that we're justified by faith and nothing else. We're going to cover that. That we are justified by faith in Jesus Christ, by the grace of God that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. We are justified and saved by faith in Jesus Christ. And then we're going to talk about the fact that we are to live by faith. That we are called to not just, yeah, a lot of people get caught up in, yeah, that's just the foundation stuff. Yeah, you believe in Jesus, but now let's move over to this. No, you are called to live by faith. Yes. It is a continual, yes. second by second, moment by moment, day thought by day, by trust, by yeah, thought by thought, <laughs> trust in the Lord Jesus yes. Christ for what he's provided. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, there are going to be works of faith. There are gonna, there's going to be yes. an outcome, a, a corresponding action in your life that reflects that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a corresponding action that reflects that, that faith that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's called a work of faith. And then lastly, God is going to work through your faith in him, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your trust. Everything that God is going to do in and through us, he does it as we live by faith in Jesus Christ. And so there are so many different questions that we're going to answer concerning these things that far more than I've even mentioned today that we're going to talk about concerning uh, uh, being justified by faith, living by faith, the works of faith and God working through us living by faith in Jesus Christ. There's so many different things that we're going to look at as we go through this series. But again, I just want to touch on again, just as an introduction. I didn't want to hold this long because I just wanted to introduce all of what we're attempting to go with this faith series. We're going to talk, touch on so many different things. I think the next thing that we're going to start on is what is the hindrance of faith and what causes a person to come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to start to look at that is what hinders. Why is it that some individuals out there don't live by faith in Jesus Christ, refuse to come to him? Mm -hmm. And why for even those that have come to them, have they steered away from the faith? What is it that has aroused, uh, arise that has caused them to be redirected from faith in Jesus Christ? And what's the outcome of that? What's the result of that? And so we're going to get into all of that 
in the next uh, couple of weeks. So uh, that's all we have for today. Anybody got any questions or, or thoughts before we get out of here? You got anything, right? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Because I didn't see this as one of the questions. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, pe people don't necessarily veer away from faith as a mm -hmm. consistent thing mm -hmm. but it's like situation by situation mm -hmm. and that's from that's from the apostle on down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um are you going to deal are you going to address that question as well why absolutely i mean why people why what well what why that? in certain situations oh my people uh don't mm -hmm. exercise the faith oh yeah abs absolutely because just like we talked about that faith is a second by second moment my my by moment Every day, but a, 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 it, there's a, a difference from because, like, because just like you said, that isn't necessarily a veering away from faith. Mm -hmm. That's just again something arose that became bigger in your mind than God. Than God. Mm -hmm. and, and all that that came more uh, bigger than what Jesus Christ had done mm -hmm. in your mind. And so again, but again, at the same time, the Holy Spirit is there to to aid and renew and, and reveal to you. No. Jesus Christ and what he's done is bigger than that. And uh, but there's there is an individuals, there are individuals that are constantly talked about in the scripture that they've fallen away from faith. Mm -hmm. They have shifted. And again, and we, and I don't want to skip ahead, but hear me, these are individuals that wouldn't tell you that they've fallen away from faith. They'll say they believe in Jesus. Because falling away from faith, they're just saying, I don't believe in Jesus no more. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about that. It, falling away from faith isn't saying I don't believe in that Jesus stuff no more that's not falling away from faith there's a whole bunch of people that say they believe in Jesus and they don't and we're going to talk about that there, there, there are scriptures that talk about how and I'm skipping ahead but there, there are in scriptures that talk about how there's an introduction of another Jesus mm -hmm. meaning a false presentation as to who Jesus Christ is and as you believe in this false Jesus who are you not believing in the real, the real one Exactly, mm -hmm. and so we, and that's what really falling away from the faith is. So we're gonna talk touch on that. Yeah, Go ahead, sir. Know, one more thing, far as uh, faith is is um, is is believing, because when you say that you don't believe in Jesus, you mm -hmm. acknowledge that there's a Jesus. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. You just don't believe in it. Yeah, whatever. yeah. Um, and 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 that. You know, you can have faith in that area. Man. But it's where really your faith where you take it. You're going to take it to the eternal God. My, 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 or my. You're going to use it in the, in the temporary God. Oh, my. Oh, because my. it does not only have to do with things of this world, my, but my. even in the world to come. Oh, that's exactly right. And see, y'all got me <laughs> skipping ahead. I ain't going to mess with it. But there's a term that the Bible uses. Um, it's called iniquity. Mm -hmm. and, and iniquity is ultimately that false belief. It's ultimately yeah. what it is. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a faith, but it's not a biblical faith. Right. It's not a biblical, right. true, authentic, what the Bible calls faith. It's called iniquity. And we're going to get into that. And this, again, it's, it's, it's a false belief on the basis of a, a falsehood or lies or deception, yes. even self-deception. Yes. It's a belief on the basis of self-deception. Instead of a belief on the basis of the truth of what you know about yourself and what is now revealed to you of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's where true mm -hmm. faith is. And we're going to get into that in the, again, the next couple of series. Anything else, y'all, before we get out of that? You good? Mm -hmm. Yeah? All right, Lord, we just bless you. We honor yes, you. We praise you, God. We just thank you just for thank this you, time. Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity of being here. Thank you, oh Lord, for just continuing to show us that you have provided everything by us simply trusting in you mm -hmm. and what your son has done. And he has truly provided for us everything that we need. We are complete in him. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we ask, oh God, that you allow our faith to be strengthened as the truth of what your son has done is poured into our hearts. Allow us to cling to him like never before. Allow us to. No matter time to right now. Not promise to any of us. So please turn. Please.